Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm really excited because we have Ellie Young, and she is an alcohol-free life coach, and she also is a hormone expert, and she helps with balance and hormones, and she is fabulous when it comes to doing this. And she is here today. I would just want to remind you that she has her own podcast on our show. So if you go under the advisor, you'll see her podcast and you can see all her shows and episodes that she's recorded. And she's done a ton of amazing episodes. So you may want to check her out because she really knows her stuff well and she gives great advice. So I'm really excited because today um, is Sober October pep talk and she is going to tell you some things that you probably never heard before and she's going to give you some encouragement that's going to lead you a long way. So Ellie, it's so good to have you back on the show. I'm always excited when you come on, you know, tell everybody, you know, briefly a little about yourself and let's learn about a little about, you know, Sober October, what it entails. Yeah, so um, I'm a certified alcohol-free life coach and turned hormone balancing expert. And that's really just kind of a snapshot of my own personal journey. I gave up alcohol in 2021 after a failed dry January, which is why I love Sober October because these when these months come up in the culture, these opportunities where there's just this momentum of groups of people trying an alcohol-free lifestyle on, I get really excited because that's exactly where my journey began. And yeah. then, of course, after, um, you know, after getting alcohol free, I went deep into the science of hormone balancing because I was I was 40 and everything was changing. And I actually had no idea just how much um, alcohol had been wrecking my hormone balance. And yeah. so that is one of the biggest motivators that I want to communicate to women out there listening that if if you were kind of on the fence about trying, you know, a dry month. One factor you should really consider is your hormone health because it is impacting your sleep. It is impacting your cortisol levels. It is impacting your blood sugar levels. And all of these things trickle down into your hormone balance, your sex hormones. And so often a lot of the things that women are struggling with can be alleviated by cutting alcohol. And that's that's tough for a lot of women to swallow. They're just like, but wait, don't take away my wine I need it for all these reasons, right? You feel like I'm taking away your joy and I'm taking away your relaxation. And so those are exactly the types of thoughts that I like to work with, with my clients throughout like a dry month, like so, um, sober October is we say, okay, that's a, that all those, re all that resistance you're feeling and all that, all those thoughts in your head that are coming up, that is communicating to you exactly what is going on in your subconscious these beliefs yeah. about alcohol that are keeping you stuck in the drinking cycle and, and really controlling your behavior and not creating any opportunity for you to like go like, well, maybe I don't have to drink here and yeah. I can actually enjoy myself. Right. You know, I, I think we get caught up with society. We get the pressure of society. And like I was saying, sometimes, you know, you could be a leader you know, and, you know, and you don't have to just be a follower, but when you're in sometimes a situation where you're with, a, you know, maybe a group of workers and, or you're with, you know, a bunch of friends and they're all having dinner and they're all laughing, they're all having a glass of wine or, you know, alcohol that they drink. And you're like, they're like, you know, they're like, so what do you want to drink? And, you know, like you, you might, you'd be on the cusp, you know, like, ah, uh, I don't know. Well, maybe I should, ah, uh, well, it doesn't really agree with me. I don't feel good the next day. Well, I'm I doing that and then you kind of give in sometimes you know and it's like mm -hmm. I think it's it's hard for a lot of people like you know a lot of people want to kind of fit in with their groups you know they don't want to be the awkward one you know and nobody else is you know saying anything so they just go with it you know and I know people that will order a drink and they'll make believe they're having a sip but they're not really drinking and they just order it just to fit in with the group you know how do you get out of that like how do you really get enough of courage to really stand up for yourself and say, you know, I don't, you know, it's, you know, thank you so much, but you know, I don't, I don't really feel like drinking tonight or I'll do a mock cocktail. Like we were talking about, it's like the biggest thing right now. It's so popular. Yes. Yes. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot there. And I, I totally recognize that one of the biggest kind of hurdles for people to get over is that like social awkwardness. Right. And I yeah. want to encourage you that like this again, it's come, stemming from a subconscious belief that you need alcohol to socialize. We mm -hmm. were conditioned from a very young age that alcohol 
is equal. This is an, an integral part of how we socialize. And yeah. so we've forgotten how to do it without alcohol. We, any yeah. social anxiety that naturally comes up, we assume <laughs> like we need alcohol to conquer that. And we just yeah. haven't, we haven't learned any other ways to do it. And it yeah. is, it is one, yes, it is awkward. Two, can you get over it? Absolutely. And there, and can socializing be even more um, fulfilling without alcohol? A hundred percent. And mm -hmm. part of that is because your brain is like fully online, right? When yeah. we think that it helps with our social anxiety, it's really just dulling our brain. It is really just taking our prefrontal cortex, which is your most evolved part of your brain. It's numbing it. It's literally like sedating it. And yeah. so you're not really more confident. You're not funny. You're not sexier. You're not wittier. It's really just quieting your brain, subduing you momentarily. And yeah. we've all seen videos of ourselves after drinking. You're like, oh, I thought I looked so hot that night. And then you see a photo of yourself and you're like, all right, you know, not, not the best. And so that is, is kind of this misleading myth. It's, it's a myth about alcohol, that it's necessary for socializing, that it makes you funnier, helps you come out of your shell. Um, yeah. And so this takes practice, proving to yourself that you can enjoy yourself when going out. Um, right. And, and one of the tricks to doing that is, is confirmation bias. So it's, if we convince ourselves that we're not going to have a good time going out and drinking, cause you're like, okay, sober October, oh, this is going to suck. I'm going to be missing out. I'm going to feel deprived. It's going to be awkward. Your brain then goes, let's look for information to support that. It's going to yeah. filter out anything else because the brain wants to be right. But if yeah. you tell yourself, okay, this is going to be different. This is going to be, sure, it's going to be awkward, but that's okay. It's just different. And yeah. what else is possible in this moment? Maybe I'm going to have a great time. Maybe I'm going to have a new experience. And when yeah. you have new experiences, you get a big dopamine reward. And so yeah. there's so much more out there if you can open up your mind and kind of, I, I always talk about a beginner's mind, show up to this event with a beginner's mind, like you've never done it before and be really yeah. curious, like, oh, who could I talk to? And like yeah. my, one of my best, best tricks too, is like, if you're in a weird place and things are, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is like a lot of these social events end up being not that great. Cause you're just like, yeah. oh, it, that's right. It's not that cool to sit in a room for three hours with people as they get progressively drunker. Like, no, <laughs> like maybe an hour I've had my food. I want to go somewhere. And so like, yeah. I get up and I like take a lap. I go explore, I go, and you end up, you're seeing so much more. You're taking in so much more information because your brain is online. You're all five of your senses are alert and yeah. this can be exciting. And so that's why we kind of have to shift our mindset from this place of feeling deprived to a place of feeling empowered by like, yeah, I'm doing this because I want to sleep great tonight. I want to feel really good tomorrow because I've got stuff to do. I've got a life to live tomorrow. And right. we trade so much of our time for this 20 minute buzz. Yeah. Not realizing it's going to cost us hours, if not days of discomfort and disruption in yeah. our brain chemistry, in our gut health, in our energy levels, in our metabolic health and yeah. all for this kind of like buzz. And it's like, when you start to kind of spell that out for people, they're like, aha lights go on. Like, oh, that's right. That's right. You know how, but then they're like, but then what else do I do for fun? You know, how, how do I get over this hurdle? So it's yeah. tricky. It's a tricky little thing, but that's why I encourage people to do work. Don't go into sober October and not do any mindset work about it. You know, mm -hmm. you're really up against your own thoughts that again, and those thoughts are not your own. They have been conditioned into you for a long yeah. time. So it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility to work on changing them. And when you do, it gets so much easier. You can completely lose your desire to drink. And mm -hmm. from that, you're like, what else do I want to do with my life? You know, yeah. alcohol mm -hmm. just kind of narrows your, your capacity to like experience it. You're like, I can only yeah. do these things. And once you kind of go, well, I'm not doing that thing anymore. What else am I going to do? Everything yeah. opens up. Possibilities are just endless. Right.
Oh, so true. So true. I think, you know, sometimes we have to not rely on alcohol to make us feel good. Like so some people think, oh, I won't be as fun if I don't drink because, you know, I'm kind of boring if when I'm sober, you know, people aren't going to like me as much, you know, and, you know, so they want to have that, you know, because, you know, of course, like when you have alcohol, you start to get sillier and you might say things or act a certain way that you normally wouldn't when you're not, you know, on alcohol. And so some people like have that mentality. I don't know if I'll be really, you know, people will like me, you know, cause I'm kind of, you know, uh, you know, a little bit on the dry side when I'm, when I'm sober, you know, but people are going to like you no matter what. And I think, you know, if they really are truly a friend of yours or they, you know, are they a good person, they're going to like you no matter what. And I think, you know, we have to realize that true friends will always like you for who you are. And even people you meet and you barely know, they're going to, they're going to like you as a person more than they're going to like that alcohol person. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, a lot of what comes up for people, and again, in my work, it's never about the alcohol. I try to get people to understand, like, it's about these beliefs that are subconsciously driving your behavior. And these beliefs reveal themselves to you when you say things like that. Oh, well, I'm not that funny without alcohol. No one's going to like me. And so these beliefs fall into three categories. They can be beliefs about the substance itself, like I need alcohol to enjoy myself. They could right. be beliefs about society that mm -hmm. I need alcohol to fit in because everybody's doing it. It's going to be weird if I'm the only one not drinking or right. their beliefs about self. And yeah. so I'm, you know, I'm not enough without alcohol. And so again, this exploration of these thoughts that come up, all this resistance. And so one of the things I have people do when they first start drinking or stop, start, start trying to stop drinking is make yeah. a list of all the reasons that they drink. And mm -hmm. then the next list is all the reasons they fear giving it up. And right. sometimes the list is a lot longer. And it's like, yeah. I'm afraid that, you know, blah, blah, blah. But what this does is it brings to the surface, are these beliefs about the self, the mm -hmm. substance or society? And you really, it starts to get really crystal clear that it's really not about the alcohol. You know, yeah. again, it, it's about something else that we can heal, that we can work on and yeah. somehow give an alcohol that job. We're like, yeah. oh, I'm bored, drink. Oh, I'm lonely, drink. Oh, I'm, I have anxiety and stress in my life, drink. And, and then you have to ask yourself, is alcohol doing a very good job? Like yeah. I've just I've given it so many jobs. And then it's like, okay, wait a minute. Like that's why your life expands in so many different ways when you take this opportunity and again, that's why Sober October is so cool because there's this momentum in the culture of like, let's all try this. Let's all try this for a month and, mm -hmm. and see what happens. But again, don't try it the old school way where you're just like, I'm going to use willpower and I'm not going to have any fun. I really want encourage you to like explore the resistance that's coming up right now. The very thought of trying to not drink for 30 days. What is your voice telling you? Is it right. saying, well, I can't because I have this event coming up or I can't yeah. because I have, you know, these work drinks I have to go do or a wedding, you know, or Halloween, you know, it's right. like, okay, so what is that telling you? If you, you believe you can't have fun at these things yeah. if you're not drinking. What does mm -hmm. that mean? Like, let's explore that a little more. And then we get deep into it. It's like, hey, when you were a kid, did you need alcohol to have fun? Right. Oh, so, so you're like, okay. I have evidence of this in my past that I didn't need alcohol to enjoy myself. When did that change? Yeah. You know, and so we have to kind of go back to that childlike beginner's mind and be like, what do I actually like to do for fun? You know, yeah. and this like this opening again, where it's like adult behavior is actually pretty boring, right? We're often it's like, we think it's exciting and we're all just like sitting together in a room with alcohol. You right. know, kids are like, I don't want to do that. I want to go run around. I want to go like see something. I want to play, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and so part of getting alcohol free is like this playful exploration about like, what else is, what else is there than drinking a neurotoxin, you know, to entertain right. myself. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, it, so many times I feel so much better if I don't drink, you know, like it, it's just, you know, and, and think about it when people have to go to work the next day. 
most people don't drink because they know they're not going to feel great the next day or they know they won't be up to their full potential. So if their body is, 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 if they know that it does that to their body, why not be alcohol free all the time? You know, do you really need that? You know, so a lot of people say, oh, well, it takes the edge off, you know, like, you know, it helps me deal with stress, but you know, there's so many other ways too, that you could deal with stress. Stress is part of life, you know, and yeah. you know, back to like addiction, you know, when, and if you need something to cope, you know, like alcohol or drugs, then you have a problem, you know, mm -hmm. it's learning to just add different productive things to our lives. I think, you know, that we can incorporate the alternatives so we can live, you know, for our full potential, happy without the usage of alcohol in our lives. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a, it's a coping mechanism. I mean, it's, what is the best way I've heard it described? I think it was Gabor Mate described addiction as a comfort seeking ritual. And so at mm. the end of the day, we're trying to change our state, whatever state yeah. of being we're in, we want to change it. And sometimes that's not even coming from a self-medicating place. It's coming from like, oh, I want to enhance this moment. It's a beautiful day. What would make yeah. this better is a glass of wine. Um, yeah. and, like, all of this has been conditioned into us. It's, it's, and it's living in our subconscious. Like we're not yeah. consciously aware of this stuff. These urges just come up and they're pretty strong. They're, these cravings are pretty powerful and willpower can only take you so far. You know, right. when you commit something like sober October, you might be able to make it through your weekday, a week, week. And then we get to the weekend and you're like, oh, my entire system believes that there's a reward at the end of this work week and I reward yeah. myself with alcohol and I go out and I cut loose and we think we associate all of the kind of relief of the work week ending with alcohol we're yeah. we're giving it all this credit like oh alcohol is the thing that really is the 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 icing on the cake at the end of the week when it's like no like your work is done you get to you know sleep in you get to like have some free time, you get to hang out with friends. All of these things are inherently great and good and restorative for your yeah. health. And yet we turn it all over to the alcoholic. Wow, I, I can't enjoy myself. I can't reward myself now. Um, yeah. And so again, like these little things where you just like, let them marinate in your brain and go, whoa, isn't that interesting? Like I'm rewarding myself with this substance that actually like wrecks my sleep, makes me feel like shit um derails me from any like progress I'm making in my fitness or my diet and yeah. we're like how is that a reward you know yeah. it's a trick mm -hmm. it's a true biochemical trick to our yes. brain and and one that is just so ingrained in our culture that it's if you can kind of step back and observe yourself it's like the matrix we're just watching ourselves like you can go, you can really start to hack it a little bit and go like, okay, like I'm going to like not follow suit here. I'm going to try something different. And that's yeah. when you really start to like, really start to grow because you're yeah. no longer following the masses and just like dulling your anxieties that are actually trying to tell you to grow, dulling yeah. your stressors that are probably telling you, Hey, something's not right in your life. You know, so, so much of what we've used alcohol to do is like pacify ourselves and mm -hmm. it's, it keeps us stuck. It keeps us small. And, and mm -hmm. then, you know, you don't grow. I've grown more in the last three and a half years living alcohol free than I did in a decade. Right. And how did, how did that make you feel in those three years, not drinking alcohol compared to what you were feeling before? Well, it wasn't easy. And so the first Again, that's why I love Sober October. So dry, my first try was a dry January. I, I didn't do it. I failed. In fact, I try, I quickly adjusted it from not drinking at all to saying, I'm just going to drink on the weekends because I was drinking pretty much every night, not heavily, not like blacking out, just like glass of wine with dinner, a cocktail here and there, Taco Tuesday. There was just, there was endless opportunities to drink in my community. Um, yeah. So cutting back to just the weekends was a huge improvement for me. But then I tried to say, okay, I'm only going to drink on the weekends and I'm only going to have two drinks. I'm not going to have any hard alcohol because to my brain, I was like, ooh, wine is not as bad as hard alcohol. And I'm right. only going to have two glasses. And I would have my two glasses and then be immediately like 
wanting more and like watching other people and obsessing over it and being like, I'm done. I can't have any more. And it was so not enjoyable. It was all consuming in my brain. And I was like, this isn't fun. And then I would still feel bad the next day. It's not yeah. like, I, I like, oh, you only drink two. So you're not going to, I still had trouble sleeping. I still had a hangover. I still just felt blah. And I was so frustrated by that experience. And again, I hadn't done any mindset work. I hadn't read any books at this point. I was really just like white knuckling it, trying hard to make right. it through dry January. And so in February of that year, I actually started reading a bunch of different literature about quitting alcohol. And right. That is where my mindset shifted. And all of a sudden it was like, I don't want to drink anymore. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy though. Even though I had this conscious desire, my subconscious was still fighting me because there was just this history of behavior that wanted to, you know, that was just priming me to drink in all these different occasions. Like, oh, drink, oh, drink. And so that's when I hired a coach. Um, And I worked with a coach for four months And it was a game changer for me. And it's a big reason why I'm a coach today is I want to pay this gift forward because the coach helped me navigate. It was so nice to have someone to talk to on a weekly basis because it's a pretty lonely road when you're not drinking because most people are just blissfully unaware. They're like, Mm -hmm. oh, I don't have a problem with alcohol, but yet they are complaining about their hormone health and they're not sleeping and their relationships are kind of sucky and they're their kids, they, you know, they're disconnected from their families and their kids and they, but they think, oh, but it's not the wine, you know, they would never consider it because there's so much shame associated with like, you know, alcoholism. Right. So they think as long as they kind of stay in this gray area of like, I can drink as much as I want, as long as I don't embarrass myself or get a DUI and they really, no one wants to look at it. And so if you are someone who is brave enough and curious enough and compassionate enough to say, you know what? I don't like this. I don't like how I feel. And I'm, yeah. I want to change it. And, and so pursuing that and getting a coach, it's just like hiring a, a fitness, a trainer. It's just like mm-hmm. hiring a nutritionist and there yeah. should be no shame in it. it. It should be celebrated because the pursuit of health in living an alcohol-free life is Absolutely incredible. I would argue it's hard. It's harder than fitness. It's harder than dieting because yeah. it is an addictive substance and it's everywhere in our culture. You know, yeah. I went to get my hair done um, a couple of weeks ago and I, they offered me wine like on three different occasions or like champagne. Would you like a glass of champagne while you, you know, get your hair done? Would you? And I, I finally had to tell them, I was like, I'm alcohol free and I'm actually like an alcohol free life coach. (laughs) Like this is, this is an interesting experience, you know? And even after I said that, I think one more time, she just automatically offered me a glass of wine. And I was like, wow, like if I were struggling and I was trying to be alcohol free and they offered it to me three, four different times while getting my hair done, like, holy smokes, like, you know, you have to be like really strong and, and in this and it's not willpower. I want to, I want to say that again, it is not you. It is not your fault. If you are caving to drink, it is your conditioning and that can be changed. And that is like exactly what the work is. This is, you are not fundamentally flawed. It isn't your genes. It is, it is your environment Mm -hmm. and it is the social conditioning you've had. And so we can change that. And so that is a really empowered place to be is to think like, okay, I, this isn't my fault, but I can totally change my brain. And this is how you do it. And it's simpler than people think it really is. And kind of what my coaching courses do is they really, we, it's like a little three-part system. Um, and I, I made it rhyme. So it's fun. It's called subconscious cracking, which is where Mm -hmm. we go after those subconscious beliefs. The next part called habit hacking. That's Mm -hmm. where we really go after like your day-to-day habits and your environments that are shaping your life. And the next part is dopamine stacking. And that is where we build a life that actually feels really good. Because at the end of the day, after that high, we're after that buzz. And you, you can replace these things with healthy behaviors that like help you grow that. And, and eventually you're like, 
this life feels so good. I would never even think about going back to the other one. Right. Right. I love it. I love it. You know, it, it really is like it, you really have to have a strong mindset and, you know, it's not your fault if something, you know, it, it doesn't, if you, if you fall, you make a mistake and, you know, you have a, you know, a drink or something like that, but, you know, it, it's getting back on the wagon and, and just trying again, you know, and doing your best and, and you're not beating yourself up. Cause I think so many people beat themselves up after, you know, they, they try so hard and they might have a slip up and then they, they just, it, it just breaks them. They just feel, they feel like, you know, like a loser, you know, they feel they have all these thoughts in their head of, you know, how good they're not, you know, and, you yeah. know, it's really not like that. You know, it's, I think, you know, you, you should reward yourself each day that, you know, you, you got that far, you know, but, you know, make it a, like you said, you know, make it part of your mindset, make it part of your lifestyle and, and not yeah. really think about it so much, you know, but just, living the lifestyle and, and being able to say no and be able to not be afraid to, to let others know that you're alcohol free. Yeah. That's a, another good point you brought up is just how ineffective shame is at changing us. You know, if I, I like to joke that if shame worked, none of us would have a problem, right? We'd make a mistake. We'd be so ashamed of it. And then we'd be like, I'll never do that again because that was so shameful. No, in yeah. fact, shame, shame actually feeds our our self-destructive behavior it feeds the yeah. self-medicating and stuff because we start feeling so much worse we're mm -hmm. like oh i might as well i might as well self-medicate again you know um and I, I did this for a long time and um i i was quietly secretly ashamed of my drinking knowing that like i needed to change and i just didn't know how and yeah. and again, i was so filled with this idea that something was wrong with me and the quickness that I was able to shift my behavior after learning about the subconscious mind and learning how to like flip the script on these thoughts that were keeping me stuck. Yeah. I changed overnight and I was, I'm talking a daily drinker. I was life of the party. I hosted all the parties. Um, there were, there are people in my life who are still like, I can't believe you're an alcohol free life coach, you know? And to this day, I look back on that life and I'm like, it's not that I regret it. I I think it all led me to where I am. I think that I needed to be that person and then have this transformation so that I can help people. Um it it feels it feels so purpose driven now. Um yeah. and it makes me um it's just it gives me a lot of like purpose and meaning because I just I know that there's people out there who need to hear this yeah. story. And to hear that, like, there's nothing wrong with you. It's okay. Yeah. And you also don't need to have like a blackout, fall down, drunk, rock bottom moment. You could just right. be like in the gray area of drinking and not feeling great about it, but you still can't change the habit, you know? Um, so I, I would love to share with you some of the, um, first of all, there's there's a cool little thing called like the, the psychological stages of change that your listeners might kind of recognize. And if, if they're curious, like, God, you know, I've, I'm at this point in my life where like, I hear this stuff and it's like, I want to do it, but I just can't get over that hurdle. That yeah. like initial like hump to like, how do I actually get myself ready for change? Right. So yeah. let's go, I'm going to go through this, the stages of change. So there's the pre-contemplation phase. This is where people are unaware they even need to make a change. A lot right. of people are living in that, especially with alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. Next phase is called contemplation phase. This is where they're aware they want to make a change but they're not quite ready. I would say a lot of people are here. Maybe they hear sober October and they're kind of like, Ugh, I should probably do that, but I'm not ready. I've got all this resistance, right? Yep. And then the next phase is preparation phase. This is where they're actually like determined to do something about it. Maybe they're putting some things in motion. They're starting to take some actions. Maybe you signed up for a course. Maybe you yep. hired a coach. Maybe you bought some non-alcoholic beverages for your house. And you're right. like, okay, I think I'm going to think I'm going to do sober October, right? And then yeah. the next phase is action phase. So between this preparation phase and this action phase, it can be really uncomfortable because this is where that cognitive dissonance lives. This is where you're like, I consciously know I want to head this direction, but right. my subconscious is fighting me. It's like, 
hey girl, a drink sure sounds good right now. You've been working hard. You made it through the week. That's good enough. Four days is good. You should have a drink, right? And yeah. that part sucks. It really does. Cause you're like, why can't I stick to this plan? And yeah. this, that is when you need, you need support, you need community, you need coaching, you need new information that is going to help tackle that subconscious belief and like yeah. rewrite. And once you get your subconscious and your conscious back in alignment where they're like agreeing with one another, they're yeah. like, I don't drink. And your subconscious is like, yeah, I don't want to drink either because I no longer believe alcohol to be serving me. I don't think it's going to help me have more fun. I don't think it's going to help with my stress. But like that little phase of rewriting the script in our subconscious, it takes time. We have yeah. to remember we've been drinking for how long? We've been drinking for decades. And yeah. so that conditioning is very, very powerful in our subconscious. It's like this iceberg and it's just massive. The, the amount that's going on under the surface, trying to talk you into drinking. Yeah. And so once you know that you're up against that, you can kind of just be a little more compassionate with yourself. You're like, oh yeah, that's right. Like I have watched my family members drink. I have watched it in the media my entire life pretending. Yeah. I mean, it's football season, right? So if you watch football, how many ads do you see about alcohol? Yeah. Are you guys a fo football family? I, yeah. I mean, I can't believe the number of alcohol ads that come on. Um, there's a really interesting one right now that really bugs me. It's McCollin, uh Is it a scotch or a whiskey? That's how little I know about those types of alcohol. Scotch. Is that scotch? Yeah. And it shows this woman who's like, oh, she's, she's being like shut down. Like these men, these businessmen are trying to shut down her business and tried to like buy her out of her business or something. And it shows her like tearing up the check. So they're kind of tying this like women's empowerment and that she then went on to create, I think they said the most expensive bottle of scotch ever bid on in an auction. And I'm like, are you so what is this ad trying to convince me that like women's empowerment and she didn't give up and she's this powerful independent woman. And I'm like, but it's an alcohol commercial yeah. and it's just like, is there any area they won't go and try to like piggyback on, you know, because yeah. they're not selling the booze at this point, they're selling this like independence and this empowerment. And I just like, wow, that is, that's incredible. And as, as much as I can be aware of it, it still affects you on a subconscious level. That's like yeah. when my kids are watching and I'm just like, I have to point it out to them. I go, look, look at that. They have sexy girls. They look like they're having the best time ever. You know, everybody's laughing and everybody's beautiful. Nobody looks hungover, drunk, sick, bloodshot eyes, bloated, bad skin. Like the, that's the reality of what alcohol does to you. And yeah. so I have to tell that to my kids. Like, isn't that funny? They're trying to sell joy. And they're trying to sell connection. And it's like, that's that's a lie. You know, you yeah. can have all those things. It is not in a bottle. Yeah. You know? 100%. 100%. It's so true. And, you know, a lot of those commercials are just even on TV, you know, and they, they you know, they basically, you know, just trying to hit a new market because the mm -hmm. scotch is dominated by males. So, you know, yeah. they're trying to get, yeah. you know, the market which would be females so yeah one of my favorite books that was it was actually the first book that I read in my journey was quit like a woman by Holly Whitaker and she goes through the historical aspect of how the alcohol industry has targeted women and how mm -hmm. they have tied it to women's liberation very similar to how they did with cigarettes so in the past like women um, didn't smoke as much as men and in the 70s, when, you know, women's rights, activism, all that stuff was happening, they did a famous ad that was um, a woman smoking a cigarette out in public. So I guess women smoked, but they didn't do it out in public because it was, it was considered right. not proper. They smoked okay. in the home. So they were trying to get more women to smoke and to bring it out into public. So they called it a torch of freedom. The ad was like, let you know go light your torch of freedom tying it to this women's liberation movement and i guess yeah. the rates of women smoking skyrocketed higher than men and the deaths associated by cigarettes also skyrocketed making making women have it affecting women more 
And the yeah. exact same thing has happened in the alcohol industry. The, the mommy wine culture and the way that they have tied it as a reward, as bonding, as glamour, as sophistication, all of these things were targeting women. And right. once you, it makes you really mad when you start to like recognize how you've been toyed with a bit and yeah. how, you've bought, how you've bought into it. Like, again, the, the salon experience of getting my hair done, they're like, Ooh, you're indulging, have a glass of, you know, champagne. Never mind that it's 11 o'clock in the morning and you have to go pick up your kids <laughs> from school or go back to work. I was just like, wow, like, look at this culture. You know, we're so bought into this being ah, oh, this is how you really live it up, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so true. And, you know, it's media. So, you know, uh, people are influenced by media big time. You know, it, it doesn't take much, you know? So people people will, you know, gravitate to what the media says and does. You know, if they say you know, the sky is purple, the majority of the people will believe that it's purple. So, you know, it has, it has the power, you know, yep. unfortunately it's not always used the proper way, but imagine if it was how great the world could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of, that leads me to kind of my next angle on my work is so when people are kind of stuck in this, like, okay, cog cognitive um, bias where they're like their subconscious and conscious we're working on that. We're trying to rewrite that script. The next yeah. thing we can do that can really help us on this journey is like, is believing we can enjoy ourselves. So just like that media affects you when you see this idea of celebration, you're like, oh, I need alcohol to celebrate. We have to condition ourselves with new information and new thoughts. And part of that is imagining yourself having a good time instead yeah. of, instead opening your mind instead of saying, I can't have a good time. Yeah. Not only are you, I want to, I can, you need to actually visualize it and yes. you want to see it in your brain. See this possibility of you having a good time, non-alcoholic drink in hand, laughing, connecting, and yeah. really fuel yourself with that mm -hmm. positive imagery because the brain doesn't know the difference. The brain yeah. starts, to, oh, cool. This is a possibility. Now I can filter in information to support that idea because I've seen it. I've seen that it's true. I've seen it as possibility. And so this is confirmation bias and it can work for you or against you. So yeah. if you want it to work for you, you have to write, write the narrative that you want to see, write this future self that is yeah. thriving alcohol free and really believe in that. And this yeah. is again, why this mindset work is so, so powerful. Don't go into sober October and just try and do live your life exactly how you're living it and not change anything because yeah. if nothing changes then nothing changes so right. you start with the change up here in your mind you create this new possibility for yourself yeah and you you and any of that resistance that comes up you catch those thoughts and you go huh is that true look at that it was trying to talk me into drinking right now let's put right. holes in that. do i really need alcohol to enjoy myself no what do i like to do for fun you know, mm -hmm. oh, that's right. I like to do these things. And so it really is, this month is about exploring and what better time than a sober October when there's all of the sober, you know, resources are coming to the surface right now. There is countless non-alcoholic beverages to try, mocktails. Um, there are communities. There are like sober get togethers going on. So I encourage you to like, don't do this alone go mm -hmm. find tag a friend oh that we you know we were talking about this before we started recording a lot of people feel pressure when they show up and they're like i don't want to be the only one not drinking i don't want to say i'm not drinking and make people feel awkward right yeah. and it's like i encourage you to actually say it because you never know who else is there also maybe trying to do sober october also who has plans tomorrow and has their health in mind and wants to sleep great tomorrow you know i tell my husband this all the time because he goes to work meetings and i'm like what if you just said hey do you want to not drink tonight like at this yeah. dinner like, give them an opportunity or window you never know they might be on the same there's more people like that and they can be tipped in either direction and yeah. so maybe they're welcome this idea of like, oh yeah, that's right. I have to travel tomorrow. I've got kids. I would love to have a healthy night and go to bed early and sleep great and get up and go to the gym, you yeah. know? hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. 
I think I think that should be like a challenge. If you had to give everybody a, like maybe a, a sober October challenge, what kind of challenge would you like to throw out to the audience? Oh yeah, well, um, I mean, I've got a I've got an awesome program that I've put together called the Brave, and I called it the Brave. Be it's actually an acronym. It's a little cheesy, but when I was writing it, I loved it because it does. It takes a lot of courage to do something like this, and the B stands for believe. Again, it's believing that you can do this. Like, not just say, I try. I've been joking with my dad, who's on this like weight loss journey right now. And we joke about, I'll try. And it's like, don't say try. You know, what's the, Yo it's Yoda. It's like, there is no try. There's do yeah. or do not do. And so right. that's exactly how I say about believe you. Don't believe you can do this. Don't just say, I'll try. Be like, yeah. I'm, go I'm going to do this, you know? Um, and then R is we are rewriting our subconscious beliefs. We are rewiring our subconscious and to, to prove to ourselves that alcohol isn't necessary for us to live right. our lives. Um, the A is awe. We are going to be accessing awe all the time because part of an alcohol-free journey is rediscovering yourself, connecting back with this intuition, this childlike fascination with the world. And it's, yeah. it's truly awe-inspiring. Um, what's the next letter? V- visualize visualizing is such a key component to success here and yeah. so we do a lot of mindset work we do a lot of visualization and e is energize we energize your purpose and your passion because once you get alcohol free you kind of feel like you can do anything it yeah. is such a huge, huge hurdle and once you overcome it you're like i you can apply the same mindset work to anything in your life that you want to change you mm -hmm. know you recognize all the limiting beliefs around you. Once you've mm -hmm. identified the ones that kept you stuck drinking, you're like, right. oh, now I get it. What other beliefs am I telling myself that have been conditioned into me for a long time about food, about relationships, about your, you know, your purpose in life? And mm -hmm. so it's really powerful thing. And yeah. it changed my life so drastically that I I love Sober October because again, I just feel like how many people are out there that just need that little tipping motivation to try an alcohol-free life and set yeah. those dominoes in motion and what's going to come. The amount of change that it had in my life. I mean, I became a coach. I became a podcast host. I have a business. I don't think I've shared this on here with you yet, but I'm building a retreat center in Costa oh. Rica. Yeah. Um, and spring of this year, for spring break, we went down to Costa Rica, not at all planning to look for land or buy, like not even on our radar, but it's something yeah. that I have manifested that I literally was like in my dreams. Like I, I journaled about it. Like I, I see myself in this place, coaching yeah. other women, bringing them together. And the opportunity presented itself in Costa Rica. And my husband and I were like, let's do this. And so I'm in the process of building a retreat center in Costa Rica yeah. And it's going to be called find myself free. So in probably oh. I'm guessing like a year and a half from now, I'll be able to come on your podcast and share with you um, the find myself free retreat where women can come. And we're not only going to work on alcohol, we will work on hormone balancing. We will do biohacking, um, all of the things that have been a part of my health journey. Oh, I love it. How exciting is that? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. I love it. I love it. And it's so needed. You know, the more, the more facilities we have to help people along the way is so important. And to be able to have a facility where you can trust, be comfortable in, learn and, and have that, that support that you need is, is so vital, you know, in your everyday life, you know, because without support, you, you can't be, you know, it's like, it, it's, this is not, this is not sobriety is not something that we do by ourselves, you know, like, you know, becoming alcohol free is not something, you know, that you can just, you know, do by yourself. You need help. You need support. You need encouragement. You need people by your side, you know, rooting for you on the sidelines. And, you know, and when you go through tough times and you're, you know, you're stressed, and, you know, or you have things in your life that are going on that are overwhelming you, you need that support. You need to be able to share with people and open up to people and have people, you know, you know, give you the, the guidance or, you know, an unbiased opinion or, or show you direction. You know, it, it's, it's just vital for your health, for your mentality, you know, and it, it, to keep you alcohol free. 
Absolutely. Our environments shape us in more ways than one. We know when people come to me and they say, I want to make all these changes. And then I say, I'm like, are you committed? Like, what are you currently committed to? And they'll say, well, I'm committed to these things. And I'm like, is the result that you're getting in your life, that's what you're committed to. That yeah. is environments that you're in right now are producing the results that you're getting. Yes. And so if you really want to make changes, it is about who you're surrounding yourself with. It is about the content you're consuming. And so that's why, you know, people feel a little awkward about getting into communities. And I hadn't really participated in like communities like that until I got alcohol free or even signed up for coaching. And now I am, I get, I get coaching all the time. Like I have done multiple retreats and hired mentors and paid for coaching because it's, it takes what your intention is and it really puts it out into the universe and it not only it holds you accountable and people are so afraid of that like i'm actually being uh, i'm actually afraid of being held accountable to what i really yeah. want in this world and right. so that's the commitment like you putting it out there it's really not the coach it's you yeah. saying i'm invested now i have skin in the game and i'm going to show up week after week and put mm -hmm. time and attention toward this and it does change you and there's no loss Like people are like, Oh, well, you know, it's like, Oh, am I not going to get my money's worth or I'm not going to da, 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 da. You know, it's, there's only growth in this kind of stuff because you are going to explore, you are going to learn things, you are going to change your subconscious. And from that, like, it's all positive. Nobody ever says, Oh, I wish I would have drank more. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, even if yeah. you just end up drinking significantly less, you're winning. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be this all or nothing approach. It could just say like, I'm going to show up, I'm going to be curious and I'm going to open my mind to what's possible here. And, um, yeah. and that's just the beginning. A hundred percent. Now, if you had to take everything that we talked about today and you want to emphasize on some important factors, what would you like to get across to the listeners today? If you are at all curious about sober October, I want you to follow that intuition but I want you to prepare yourself so that if you're in this readiness state of change, that you actually can go into it with, with some ammunition. And mm -hmm. that way it's not just relying on willpower and it's, it's showing up and questioning the subconscious beliefs that are convincing you to try and drink and be like, are those really true? Yeah. And, and then we need to work on our environments. Like, no, you probably can't continue living your life exactly the same way. Yeah. And and expect this to expect a new result. And right. so this is temporary. You don't have to, it's not like you have to avoid going out for a month. It's not like you have to avoid certain friends forever. But in the meantime, if you really want to create change, you have to change things. You have to right. have different environments, different experiences, different thoughts. Yeah. And that will really change your behavior. And so getting into a community, I would say is, is the next part, like getting coaching, um, of course, shameless plug. Like I have an awesome course called the brave. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching and for your listeners, I would love to offer everybody 20% off, um, the brave. So the use code, what did we say? Uh, advisor. If they go to my website, it's findmyselffree.com and you find the brave enter advisor at checkout and you will get a 20% off. And um, this is the course that is filled with the exact lessons that we talked about today, but we go on a deeper level. And inside this course, everybody also gets a free call with me, a one-on-one -on -one call to really go deeper on whatever has you stuck. I love it. I love it. And tell everybody once again, your website. So they, they make sure they us. It's findmyselffree.com. And that is also the name of my podcast. If you want to check me out over there. I love it. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I think it's so important for people to understand the importance of being able to do what you really want inside your heart. And if you know, if you know deep in your heart, because people who are listening to this don't want to drink, you know, or they're trying to get off of alcohol, they wouldn't be on this podcast right now. So, you know, if, if it doesn't set right with you, you know, I think the most important factor you, you, you got across is to be have, have the courage to say, it's not right for me. This is not what I want. 
and to be able to actually take action and where they can get that the action and, and how they could start. So I, I think, you know, today's podcast was amazing. I thank you so much for sharing all this information and, and taking the time out to, to help others. It really means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly why I named the course Brave, because it, yeah. it does take courage. And um, courage comes from the Latin word meaning heart. And so to have courage means to move move from the heart. I love it. I love it. That is awesome. Well, hopefully a lot of people will have courage and they'll be brave enough to try your program and to be able to experience what it feels like to be alcohol free and to live life and to really understand and know the real you and to realize that alcohol doesn't need to be a part of that person in order for that person to shine. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Stacey. As always, it's a privilege. Oh, same here. You have a great day. You too.